Hi guys, Samantha from Jessie My Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create these realistic shells using some moulds and pastels. So today I'm going to show you how to create an urchin, a sand dollar, a sliced shell, some barnacle bunches and some smaller barnacle bunches and I'm going to show you a small trick on how to turn those into a really cool pendant. So those are the pieces that we're going to be making today. Now you can use any mold that you want. I am going to be using one of, I'm going to be using my molds that I make and you can sell the, you can find them on my Etsy shop Jessima Design and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. And that also brings up another point, there will be a giveaway in this um, video so if you would like to participate in the giveaway please do leave a comment in the description below leave a like subscribe if you haven't already and share this video with anybody you think would find it helpful and I will show you at the end of the video what the giveaway will be so stay tuned and I'll show you what they will be at the end but anyway I will be using my silicon molds and these are nice hard translucent molds and they're translucent so you can see through the back when you have got a good impression. And they're made of hard silicon and they are also oven safe. Now you can use any mold that you want to. Maybe you have some that you bought from eBay or you got from a cake decorating place. You can use those as well. The only downside to them is they are a little quite a bit softer if you have a look. So I'm pressing equally, this one you can see it's a lot softer. But they're good quality and you can use them as well. So feel free to use any shell molds that you happen to have. So that is what we will be needing today. And you're also going to be needing some white Primo clay and you're going to want to condition that just by rolling it out. And to condition it, all you need to do is just roll it in your hands. Like so. Okay, and then all of our molds we're going to start out with white clay and we don't need too much clay to fit in these molds and don't worry if it's not pure white this is a good place to use um, your clay that actually isn't completely white so some dirty clay that you might have lying around and what I like to do is I like to roll out a test amount see how much I have and whether I need to take away or give some more so that one I needed to add a little bit more because it's easier to put in the right amount than have to slice your clay away because the clay um, it's better to do it that way because if you have to slice your um, your clay to get it nice and even on your piece you risk um, slicing through your mold so I'm just taking the clay and I think that should be enough I'm starting in the middle and I'm just pressing outwards and this is when a nice firm mold helps now another thing that I just want to mention is that these are completely oven safe at any clay's recommended temperature so you can bake them if you want because I've had a few comments or at least I've seen a few comments on Facebook where people have been asking whether um, the molds are oven safe and they are perfectly oven safe and these ones that I have got off of eBay they are also oven safe so you can use those in the oven so long as they are at a clay brands recommend temperature any higher than that I'm not sure how safe they are okay so there we are we've got that pressed in now what you want to do is you want to texture the back and all I do for that is I bring over a coarse piece of sandpaper and I like to texture it while it is in the mold because then you've got the front and the back done easy and I would recommend doing this with any mold that you happen to use and I'm just going to lay it down a few times and burnish make sure that I have a nice texture if I see any shiny spots like there's one little shiny spot there I'll just go in and make sure that I texture there And there's our first one. So now what we're going to do is we're gently going to start from one side and we're just going to peel it back. And this will give us a nice clean impression. But it's better to lift it up from all sides and then start bending it a little harder so you don't have to touch it. 
Let's see if I can get it out the mould without me having to touch it. Because that's always better. There we are. And there's our urchin. There's just a little piece over there that I just need to dab in. There we are. And then we have a nice clean piece. And I'm going to repeat that for each of my moulds. And again, I'll just be using white clay. And so here is what each of them looks like now that I have finished up with them. And so the last thing I want to do is I want to make a little sandy pebble for this to go on. All you need to do is grab some clay again. And I'm just going to assess how much I need. I'll start with this amount and see how it goes. I can always take away some if I need it. And you can do this with all sorts of, sh of um, shells. So if you have a look here... There are some smaller ones over here, so I wouldn't do it with this one, this one, um, maybe even these two. But these smaller ones in here, they would look quite nice using this technique because they really are too small to use as pendants um, themselves. But by doing this, you can create a really interesting looking piece. So just mould it roughly into a pebble. And I think I have too much clay there because... You don't want it to be too big. I'll just roll that back into a pebble. There you go. That should be big enough. Then just grab some sandpaper. And this is about a 40 grit sandpaper. And what I'm doing is I'm going and pressing around all the edges to make sure that it has a nice sandy texture. And just make sure you press around the edges because you want that to be nice and textured too. And then what I like to do is I like to grab that, lift it up. And then just gently press from the top. I just need to break off another piece. There we are. And this will texture the back as well. And then I'm going to choose the top, which I think will be here. And then I'm going to grab this. And then just pop it on there. And gently press. And if you're worried about the connection not being quite right, you can always use a bit of liquid clay. But it should be fine if it's raw and raw. And there we go. We've got our nice little pebble. And what I might do is I might just trim this up a little bit. You can make the pebble any shape that you want. And then once you've done that, all you need to do is just remember to pop that back on the backing. And then I'll remove that quickly. And then I'll press again. So just... Fuss with it as much as you need to until you are happy with it. I'll just round out these edges and then I think I'll probably like it better. Yeah, I like that better. The other one was a little bit too large. Okay, and then I'll just pop this back on again. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so now we've got all of our pieces done, we are now going to start colouring them with our pastels. So I'm going to start with my sand dollar, I think. And each one's going to be slightly different, so I'll show you each one. And what you're going to need are some soft pastels. And this is the um, brand that I like to use. Let me just zoom you out quickly. So you can see which one that I'm using. And it comes with lots of different little pastels. So it gives you lots of choices as far as colours go. Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out this kind of acro colour, light acro and white and that's what I'm going to be using. And then I'm going to just grab a little blade and what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by putting on fine accents of the darker acro and then I'm going to put on quite a bit more of the light acro on top and then just a touch of white okay and all you're going to do is you're going to take a nice soft brush and you're going to stip all that in And we're also going to have a second step after baking where we do an antiquing. So right now all we're doing is we're just getting some light colour in with the pastels. And then we will highlight all of those little areas by antiquing, which is what I did with the sandal. So if you have a look here, all of that light colour is pastel but all of the really dark highlighted areas where you can actually see the texture that's been antiqued so it's going to look a little plain until after you've baked it but it will look really nice afterwards and then just make sure you burnish that on and that's all we have to do for the sandal to start with and then just remember to go and do the back as well so I'll just spray a bit of each onto the back because you want the back to be coloured the same there we go. just brush around the edges as well to make sure you don't have any white bits left and there we are that is our sandal now pop that off to the side you want to just get rid of any excess pastels, so I'll just wipe that up quickly. Okay, and then our sliced shell is going to use a very similar technique. And we're going to start with the light acro. But I just want to aim for the middle of the shell with this. Just paint in the middle, don't do the edges. Okay. And then I'm going to be using this dark brown over here. And that I'm going to just scrape along the edges here and then I'll brush up against the shell in a minute and then I want to mix that with some of the light acro and again there's still going to be steps after baking to get this done properly But what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to brush it and what we're going to also, we're going to want to be doing some sanding along those edges as well. I'm going to be sanding the top to get nice and white but right now we're just going for a light brown around those edges. Okay and then finally what I like to do is I'll just take that light acro again and just cover the entire piece in that just to make sure that I get any areas that haven't been coated in pastel because we don't want any white spots and again we will antique this as well okay. and then for the back I'll just brush on some pastels and colour that up Yeah. 
and that's our sliced shell for the moment. And then what I like to do is I just want to go and burnish this with my brush. And basically you just go over the same area over and over again with the brush. And this rubs the pastels in and it gives it a really nice finished effect. And it just highlights all of that texture. Okay. Then again, just quickly wipe up. And then for this one, what we're going to want is a little bit of green. And I'm going to be using this kind of almost mossy algae green. And then, I'm not exactly what colour this is, but it's kind of like a dirty um, pond green. Along with that brown that we had earlier. Some acro and some light acro. So what I'm going to start with is some of the light acro. Kind of more like an ivory colour, I guess. And then I'll mix that in to the clay. Just give it a dust of that to start with. And I'll just add a little bit of the dark acro. And again, this really is all random. I'm not being particularly um, picky about where the colours are going. It really is quite random where I'm putting these things. It's kind of just going on there. Um, the order in which I do the colours is fairly structured, but there's very little that you can do to go wrong here, really. There really is very little that you can do to make it look not good. Because the mould's essentially done all of the work for you. So all you need to do is play around with the colouring and see what you get. So I'm just busy browning it off, but we've got all of those nice light acro undertones. And then I'm just going to burnish it to get rid of any excess and we'll rub all of that powder into those textures. And I'm just going to sprinkle on just a touch of green. And I'm just going to dab that in and then burnish. And that will just add a touch. And then this one, we're going to do a little bit more to it before we bake it. But we'll do that after I've coloured the other pieces. We're going to remove some of that pastel that we've put on there. Just colour the back quickly. And then I'll just turn to the front again. And that's our barnacle one done for the moment. Okay. Next we are going to do our urchin, which is going to be a slightly different array of colours. We're going to be using that brown and green again. And let's see. I think I might want to add just a touch of this green. And possibly a little bit of yellow. And I'll also use that pond green and acro. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a layer of light acro. That's my colour that I like to use as a base generally. And I'll also start with that kind of um, mossy green. Because that also is part of my base. And then we'll use the other colours to add highlights. But this is our foundation colour. And again, I'm just rubbing and burnishing and making sure that it's all stuck down. Okay, I'm going to want a little bit more of this colour. Just a touch of this one. Some of this pond brown. And I'm going to brush that along lightly. And there we are. That will add just the right amount of highlights. I don't think I need any others. 
And again, we will be removing some pastel from this one in just a little while. But first, I'm just burnishing it. Okay. And then we'll just quickly do the back, like usual, very easy. And you can see how many pendants we're getting done in a very short amount of time. So if you're selling stuff and you want something quick, easy and very effective, um, this is probably a good way to go. Again, quickly clean off and lastly will be our barnacle so what I'm going to start is with a light acro based base again and I'm going to aim mostly for the sand here so if it gets on the barnacle that's fine because I do want a little bit of a coat on the barnacle and then I want just a little bit of dark acro, but I only want that on the sand. Again, if it touches the barnacle, it's not a huge issue. But I like to colour the sand first. Okay. Now I'll just brush that over the barnacle. And the barnacle, I want to be this light pond green, pond brown, I guess. I'm just being careful to brush that around, not onto the sand. It's okay if a little bit gets onto the sand, but I don't want too much. A little bit of the green, and a touch of that brown. And you can use paints if you're good at paints. Um, these will also work. But I like pastels to paint. Now this one, we're probably going to be doing quite a bit of antiquing to highlight everything. I just want a little bit more brown. And I can just blow that off of the sand. Okay. And then just a touch more green. And then I'm going to work on the sand just a little bit because I think I actually want it to look like rock. So I'm just going to add just a touch of brown to it because barnacles sit on rocks. White and a touch of green. Add just a little bit more personality to it. Okay. Then just quickly do the back. That shouldn't take too long. So now that we've done that, pack away your pastels and then we can move on to finishing them off. So what I want to do now is I want to grab my urchin and use a wet wipe, a cloth or a tissue, just make sure it's not too rough, wrap it around your finger like so, take some isopropyl alcohol, it doesn't have to be this high a concentration, the higher the better, it will make it a lot cleaner, but it doesn't have to be that high. Spray a little bit on your finger and then just go along the top gently. And this can be a little delicate, so if you're a little bit worried about it, you can sand it after, bake, after you've baked it. But it does seem to come out better if I do this before baking. Just going around and I'm just touching the tops. Now I probably will do a little bit of sanding, but this removes a lot of it so that I don't have to go and remove a lot of texture to get rid of this stuff. 
because essentially instead of removing clay we're just taking off the colouring so it's still got those cool raised points and then every now and then just change the position of your finger and spray again because um, the pastel can clog up whatever you're using and it will be less effective and just make sure you go around the edge as well and don't press hard you just need to be brushing over the top and this should remove that pastel from all of your raised texture and then just go around the edges as well because it's easy to miss those There we are. And so there is our urchin piece. And you can see how much better it looks now that we've done that. It's just really brought out um, that texture wonderfully. And so the colour is blending in nicely and it just looks much better. Now again, you can see how different each of these pieces will turn out looking depending on what pastels you use. This one I antiqued. I'm not going to antique this one, I don't think. Um, this one I also antiqued um, using the same colours. So if you want to, you can antique it with brown paint to get this more grungy look. Whereas this one, um, I'm not going to antique it. So that's how urchin piece done and ready to go in the oven. I'm now just going to bring over my barnacle piece. And this one I want to be careful because I don't want to remove too much. So I'm not going to spray just yet. I want to see how much I can remove without spraying the wet wipe. Because I want to almost make it just a light brown. So I'm not going to spray, because that isopropyl alcohol takes off all the material. Whereas if you just use a wet cloth or a baby wipe, it will just take off a little bit, but it will leave almost like a little bit of a stain left. And this will just highlight our texture. That one's good. I'll go pop that in the oven too, along with our um, other piece. This one I'm going to leave. You can remove it, but I want to sand this one over the top, so I'm not going to remove anything from there. Same goes for the sand dollar. The barnacle, I probably will do that. I'm going to just spray that quickly. And I'm going to antique the barnacle as well. And I'm also just rubbing that along the sand as well. Okay. Here we are. And then what I'll also do is just to dull it a little bit more, I'll go in with the same brush that I haven't cleaned and burnish. And it will just bring back a little bit of that pastel, but not too much. And that will go in the oven as well. And so currently this is what all of our pieces look like. Let me just bring them over so you can see. Yeah, so that's what they all look like. They'll be going into the oven for a full hour at Primo's recommended temperature. And they will also be baked on a piece of paper just to keep those backs from having any shiny spots on them. And then when they're done, we can antique them. Okay, so these are out of the oven now. And so we are ready to start finishing them off. So the ones that we are going to antique, I'm just going to keep over here. And so this one we'll start with. And all I'm going to be using is this Rich Espresso from Dazzling Metallics paint. And whenever you're working with a metallic paint, always make sure you give it a good shake. Okay. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that. And 
and paint that in. Now you don't need much, you're just going to need to work it into the pores of your uh, texture. So just make sure that you really work it in. But you don't need much paint. Okay, And then we're going to do that on the back as well. Just make sure you paint everything. Okay. Now I'm just going to put that to the side and let it dry a bit. I'm not going to let it dry fully, I just want it to get a bit tacky. And for the other one, which is this barnacle one, I'm going to be using the same paint that I used, and I also want to be using this festive green. Give that a shake. Pop a bit out. It's quite a nice colour. And I'll just put a little bit more brown. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to take the green and a bit of the brown. And I want to kind of mingle them together as I paint this. I'm not going to mix them together exactly, I just want the two to kind of be sitting um, and getting mixed together while I'm antiquing this. And make sure you get into all of those little areas of your piece. There we go. Okay, and then I just want to use the brown and the green to antique my pebble. There we go. And just like the other one, I'll let this sit for a little while once I'm done. But I do just want to paint the back a bit first so that we antique that too. just get rid of any excess paint that doesn't need to be there. Okay, and by the time that we've done this one, our other one should be ready to wipe. Okay, so I'm just going to take a wet wipe and I'm going to pop this on. I'm just going to start by dabbing. remove a fair amount and then using my finger carefully I will brush away the rest there we go you can see it's starting to come away and just clean your fingers in between the process because your fingers can um, carry paint across into areas that you've already cleaned And the more you rub, the more paint you will ultimately remove. So it's completely up to you how much you want and how much you don't want. But there you go, I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm going to give that a light sand to bring out some white areas as well. So pop that to the side. This one should now also be pretty much ready. So you start by just dabbing to get rid of all of that excess. And then I'll clean up the back. And the nice thing is that the texture is fairly deep. So you won't, you won't um, get all of that paint out very easily. So you don't have to worry about being too gentle with it. Okay. 
And now you can use many other things other than pastels. Swelligant is another great way to use it. I like to use Swelligant a lot with these. But today I thought pastels would be the best. Okay. Now I'm just going to quickly wipe up this mess. Make sure you clean your hands and then we can move on to sanding. Okay. So I'm going to start with this one. And I'm just going to be using some polishing papers. And I'm going to start on my 400. And I'm just going to be sanding the front. Like so. And I'm just going to keep sanding. For the most part. And then if I need to correct some areas, I will. Okay. So I've sanded away most of what I can. And now I will go in with my polishing paper and clean out those areas. highlight that sliced effect because that is essentially what a sliced piece of shell would look like because this part that I'm sanding right now is the part where it would have been sliced and so you'd have this beautiful clean white shell against um, an aged natural process that the shell would have gone through so you're going to have clean and white versus a little bit more coloured effect. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that and I'm just going to go up to my 600 now and I'm just going to repolish but again I'm not trying to get a very fine glossy appearance I'm just going up through my grids quickly to just get it to almost like a satin finish. it's really quick and I've just got two more to go and then we'll have a nice shiny finish versus a little bit more of a natural yeah and there you can see it's got a nice light sheen to it so that's that one and it's basically finished. All we need to do is varnish it. Then we will move on to our barnacles and this one too I want to just give a light sand. Very light. It's more like I'm scraping rather than actually sanding because I'm just going in and removing pastels from those tricky areas that I couldn't get into before because it was raw. If I tried to get into those areas before I would have squished my texture. So I'm just bringing out any lines and things like that. There we go. Okay, that one's fine and ready to go. Next is the urchin. Just going to give it a light sand just to clear up and make those other areas really nice and white. Again, if you want to do any of these, you can antique. You can add some other little things, like maybe you want to add in some coloured liquid clay. That's completely up to you. There are lots and lots of different things that you could do. Again, paint and swelligant. Uh, you can use mica powders. They'll work as well. They just won't give you this really natural matte sort of a finish, and that's why I tend not to use uh, mica powders. I prefer to use pastels, but you can use those as well. Uh, Gilder's paste will also work. Um, there's lots of different things that you can use. So I'm just quickly sanding through my grits so that the um, tops here are nicely highlighted. But you can see how quick these are to do if you do them all in a big bunch. So they're something nice to take to the markets on the weekend. Because I know that a lot of you like to go to markets and things like that. This is a great thing to sell because it's really easy you could sell it for maybe ten dollars 
and it doesn't take that long. Okay, there we are. And that one is just a very slight shine on those round edges. I'm not sure if the camera can pick that up. Okay, then we have these ones that I have left to dry because they were antiqued. And then I'm just going to lightly sand. So So I'm not going to sand it too much, just lightly to bring out some extra details. And I'm also just going to sand the back a bit too. Okay, and now the difference between this one and the other one that I showed is I used a sparkly paint on this one, whereas this one I used more of a, um, more of a brown paint with no sparkle to it. But I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. And now finally we're going to move on to this one. Where we're also just going to kind of sand it a little to give some highlights. There we are. That's basically all we need to do. And so now we have all five done and ready to go. So now we want to drill some holes so that we can suspend them uh, ready for varnishing. So I'm just going to use my pin drill for that and you want to find the best whoops, you want to find the best spot for these. Now since that came out this actually gives me an opportunity to show you how to work the pin drill. It comes with these little inserts and it is the exact same on both ends and each insert has two little holes you'll pop that in, you'll choose the drill bit that fits best into your insert you'll close up your drill make sure it's nice and tight and that should close on your drill bit see, now that won't move and that's all there is to it now choose the best spot in your shell piece for it to hang and this barnacle I like because it has this like one little spot over here which is really nice to place a hole and I'll just drill from both sides to give it a nice clean finish there we are so that's where I'm going to drill my barnacle this one is a little tricky. You can drill it from the top here or you can drill it up here. Just make sure that you go deep enough in that you're not going to split your piece when you drill your hole. That's the only thing you have to watch out for with this one. But it's fairly straightforward. And this is why you need to make sure that you bake your pieces correctly beforehand. If they're not nice and flexible, then there you go. you're going to have a little bit of trouble when it comes to drilling holes because you can see how small the edges are there but if it's baked properly it's plenty strong this one we're going to just drill right at the top here and again this will depend on what your pebble shape is And then as for the sand dollar and the urchin, this really depends on which part you like the best. So you're going to have to figure out where you want it to hang. I think I like it right over here. Because it's somewhat of a round shape, it's not a perfectly round shape. But you're going to want to figure out which side works best for you. The nice thing about these is they're not too thick so they're really quick and easy to draw. And this one, let's see, I think I want to hang it from here. There we are, all done. Nice, quick and easy to drill them all. And it really depends on you where you would like to drill them. 
Now you're going to need some wire to suspend them. Okay, and what I like to use is my big pot of Varathane varnish. And if you don't have a big pot like this, you can always take your varnish out of your pot, pour it into a container that's going to allow you to dip, and then pour it back into the container when you're done. You're also going to need a length of wire and some sort of a basket with holes in it so that you can suspend your wire. And I'll show you that when we're done. So we'll just take this wire and I'm going to string each one on separately. And you want to leave enough space between each one that they're not going to be touching each other. And I'm going to put this across the length of my basket so they all sit nicely. And actually when you dip they can be close-ish together. And then when you suspend it you want to break them up a bit. And I'm just bringing them along. Now I'm just going to dunk that in and you want to be fairly rough so that they spin around and they get into all of those little bits and pieces. Okay, And then just let it drip for a minute. You can even suspend it over the pot for a little while if you want. But you just want to let that drip for a moment over your pot and then you'll pop it onto your basket. Okay. And so you'll have your basket at the ready and you can see it there, but there are holes on either side here. So I'm going to bring these over and I'm going to pop the wire through one hole and pop the wire through the other hole. And I'm going to pull on either end to straighten this out and then pop it back through these holes and it can be a little fiddly in the beginning but once you've got that done it will sit nice and straight then take these and just pop them along and then they can sit and drip quite happily for the next oh, probably about five minutes and then you just want to watch them because sometimes those drips can get stuck and so you want to just take a little um, wet wipe, baby wipe, um, tissue, a cloth, whatever you need to get it done and just go and gently dab it up because you don't want those drips getting stuck there and then you'll just leave these to cure and they will take uh, roughly an hour or so to cure and um, they can take up to an hour and a half but you'll want to let them sit and cure for a little while don't try and speed the curing along with a heat gun because you, I find that the varnish tends to bubble if you do that um, just let it happen naturally just keep an eye on it if you see big globs of varnish like there's one in that little pore there and there might be some here, just gently take your wet wipe, dab it and coax some of that varnish out. But let it sit and dry naturally um, and then when that is done we will be ready to assemble our cute little gift necklaces. Okay, so these are finished drying. I've given them a full three hours just to make sure that they are properly cured. And so now they've got nice light sheen to them and they will also be nicely sealed because of the pastels. So we are now ready to start assembly. So what you're going to need are some jump rings and my choice metal colour is brass. But you can use any colour you want. And you'll just take your jump rings of choice and you'll pop them through your hole. And now you might find that your hole get, got a little clogged up because of the varnish. But you should be able to push through that pretty easily. Like so. And you'll do that with all of your other ones as well. And then after that, you'll want to pick a bale. And 
and this is my bale of choice. And then you'll take a jump ring and pop your bale onto your jump ring, like so. And just make sure you close your jump ring properly. And I like to slide that opening back into the beads hole. Okay, and there's what your pendant looks like. And you could just sell them like that if people wanted their own necklaces. But if you want the necklace, I've just got some chain here, which works the best. Okay, and I've just gone and trimmed it to size. You'll take two more jump rings and a clasp. Let me just grab one of those. And I like to, before attaching it, just open and close the lobster clasp a few times just to limber it up. And we'll open up our jump ring on the one side and leave that closed. And we'll open up our jump ring, the other one. It through our lobster clasp and pop it through the end of our chain and close that up. And that is your necklace. And what I thought to do was actually to put it on the chain. Oops. Sometimes your bales will be big enough for you to actually slide it on over your jump ring, but in this case it wasn't. You'll want to put it, your pendant, onto the chain before you close up your jump rings. There we go. Now it's finished. And so it's really easy, really effective. It makes a great gift. Um, it's really easy to make. You can make a bunch of them in a day. I'm going to go and make up these ones quickly and then I'll show you what they all look like. Okay, and so here is what they look like now that they are done. So, it's a really easy technique that you can use with any um, shell mold that you happen to have. So, play around with it, see what colours you can come up with, see what combinations you can come up with. And play around with paints, pastes and pastels and mica powders. There's a bunch of different mixed media effects that you can use. So, now that we have finished these, let me show you what is going to be in this week's giveaway. So here is what is going to be in this week's giveaway. You will get a sea urchin mold, a sandal mold, and the sliced shell pendant that we made in this tutorial. So again, to enter the giveaway, please leave a comment in the uh, comment section below the video. Um, and please like, share, and subscribe. All of the updates on the giveaway will be posted on my group uh, on Facebook, and I will leave a link to that group in the description below. That's where I'll announce updates, I'll announce who uh, wins and all that sort of stuff. So if you would like to see all the updates and news, please do join that group and there will also be exclusive giveaways and other fun activities on that group as well. So you'll want to join. The giveaway lasts exactly one week. So um, if you're watching this a week after I've posted, the giveaway is over. But for those of you who are watching it now, um, before the week is over, please do comment below and you will be able to enter for a chance to win this cool giveaway. So I do hope to see your comments and I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.